my devotional yesterday morning, and let me just say, good morning, Vicki. Good morning, Mama Lena. Um, let me just say, yesterday was like weird and somehow just went, I woke up this morning feeling like, and you know, as I'm sitting in this chair right now, I'm just kind of like, I feel like I was just in this chair 15 minutes ago, you know, maybe two hours ago trying to do a devotional live with you all. And then life just like took off for the rest of the day. And I was, and I just was never able to come back to this chair and do the devotional that I want to share with you. So I'm just uh, declaring right now that the devil is liar. And um, I've got more than enough time. I have the intent, the, the focus and the determination and the drive. And this is what, this is also where, where um, it's, you know, I want to ask you like, how is your week going? You know, we're two days in to, for us, it's week two. I you know for some people, it's technically their week one. But for us, it's week two in our world of this coronation, if you will, and life more virtual than not. Um, other than, you know, if you're going to be conducting business, if you're going to stay in contact with um, relationships, you know, friends and um, family that don't live in your immediate house, then this is, this, you're doing a lot virtually. We're teaching group classes virtually. I'm having lunch with friends virtually. I'm conducting business virtually. And you know, um, so while this part of me staying in touch with all you on social media is very normal and very much the same, I, I connect with you guys through my pages, um, all the other relationships of my life are also having to be virtual. Um, and you know, people are using apps like Marco Polo and um, Zoom and, uh oh, I'm having a camera issue on Facebook. So, I mean, that it's like, you know, everyone's navigating this new space. So how are you doing? How are you doing with that? What, what are, I may ask this in a whole separate post, but like what are some of your favorite, you know, ways that you're staying connected? What are some favorite apps? Or what are some favorite um, uh, websites or, you know, virtual calling, you know, those kind of things. Like, are you using just a lot of what's built into your iPhone, like FaceTime and FaceTiming a bunch of people? Um, are you joining in on some group Zoom lunches? Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to do a Zoom lunch today. I just want to hear what everybody's doing. I have a lot of instructor friends who are holding classes in different ways. Um... A uh, quick note to my virtual instructor friends, I, I just want to make sure that you're thinking about um, the fact that um, the music that you're using virtually, need, um, if you're putting it on the World Wide Web, it needs to be royalty free um, so you don't get, you don't get hurt um, with copyright issues. And also that you're thinking about whether or not your insurance is covering you for teaching those classes if you're teaching them on like your personal page or your even your public page or like YouTube channel or something. Like make sure that you're you're being safe for both you and your um, your members of your new little virtual gym that you're creating there. And, um, and then the other thing I would say is yes, right now we're all pulling together in this time to, and we want to make sure that we are serving people. We're providing lots and lots of free things, but also, um, you know, that know your worth and know your value and know that it's okay when it comes time. Let's say that this continues on for longer than anyone anticipates that it's okay for you to start to open your own business and um, charge for your classes and you don't have to feel guilty about that. I'm gonna, um, I'm still having little issues with the Facebook video. So if it cuts out, I'm just gonna continue going with Instagram and I'll press, I'll, I'll post the replay later. So here's, here's my devotional from yesterday morning and y'all continue to tell me like, what are your prayer requests right now? How is your week going right now? What do you have planned this week that 
will be different from last week. Um, what did you like about, you know, what are you liking so far? Um, the, you know, give me the positives because I think it's real easy to focus on the negatives, right? But we want to, we, I, I want to help our brains kind of look to the positives and find the things to be uh, grateful for. Find the things that, um, the blessings, if you will, that um, God has made sure to create um, and, and put in our past. And, you know, even though our path right now is mostly in these four walls, wherever your four walls are, right? All right, so here we go. I was in my devotional yesterday and it was so perfect because remember whenever I came here live um, last week and we were talking about John 15, 5, where, uh, where Jesus is talking and he's saying, I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. And as you live in union with me, as your source, I mean, clue into those words, as your source, so my first question whenever I started reading this one, because y'all know I used it last week. God was showing me something in the scripture last week, but this week he really was like pulling me in to this one section where he's saying, as you live in union with me as your source, him as my source, what does that mean? Like, what does that look like? He says, fruitfulness will stream from within you. Good morning, Sada. I see you. I see you. So uh, he's saying, okay, when you're in union with me, when you're connected with me as your source, I'm. The, he's the source of everything. That's when I'm going to be fruitful, right? So fruitfulness will stream from within you. When I think of the word stream, I think that's like, a force to be reckoned with. That's like effort, I mean, almost like it's forceful, the flow of the water of a stream, yeah? It's it's forceful, it's moving on, It's there's nothing really that's gonna stop it, um, and it's just moving along. And even though there are rocks and there um, are different things that could be in the water that could start to try to block it, like it just keeps flowing. If it has to go around a rock, so be it. If it has to gush over a branch, so be it. But it doesn't stop moving. And y'all, I I was like, Lord, let this time when I, when we're all like dealing with all this stuff, you know, let this time, in this time, don't let my kids see me hunkering down and checking out of life. Don't let my kids see me doing this, this uh, going through this craziness and going through this crisis. Let them see me rising up in the crisis. Let, me, let them see me learning new skills. Let them see me overcoming some, the things that could be whole. I could just let hold me down. I could just let this whole situation convince me that it's okay for me to go hang out on the couch all day and watch uh, videos on Netflix and Amazon Prime all day and just check out and be like, well, there's nothing I can do about the situation. I can't work. I can't bring in income. I can't do this or that. No. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm reinventing. I'm, I'm reinventing. I'm thinking of new ways to do what I am most passionate about, what God has put on my heart to do in this world. I'm figuring out a way to still stay in my purpose. Because when I'm connected to my purpose, his blessings can get to me. When I stay connected with him, when I stay in union with him as my source, my source of ideas, my source of courage, my source of inventfulness, my uh, my source of patience with myself and with my kids, <laughs> my source of joy, my source of confidence right now, my source of learning when I'm navigating new technologies and things. I'm going to stay, when I stay connected with him as my source, Jesus, y'all, he's able to, he's helping, he's able to make a way for the blessing to still get to me. 
So I'm not going to, y'all, full transparency, my income, okay, was two streams. One from fitness coaching online and one from fitness teaching in Group X. My paycheck for Group X went away on the 16th, you guys, okay? I stopped, when I was told to stay home from the gym, I stopped getting paid. I could have sat down and said, oh, I only have my fitness coaching income, I've lost all this income, might as well just sit back and give up and you know, be, feel sorry for myself and just be grateful for what I have, still operating and just wait for um, this crisis to be over and the gym to decide though that they want to hire me back and give me all the classes back. And until then, I'll just, you know, be grateful for what I have for the, for the online coaching, but not try to grow, not try to, no, I'm going to, what I look, when that happened to me, I said, hold on a minute. You know what? First of all, I have a choice whether this happened to me or for me. And it, you know, I believe that God is for me. So if God is for me and he's my source, then I'm going to make sure that I lean into him right now and be like, Lord, through you, all things are possible. In you, I have all confidence and you are my great teacher. You are my great trainer. Teach me, Lord, what I need to know. Show me what classes I need to plug into. Show me what trainings I need to attend. And I did crash two crash course webinars <laughs> with experts and, and master trainers in my field to quickly learn, hey, I'm going to learn what I need to do in order to uh, do my class, keep on doing my classes. I quickly learned the safest, best way to be able to continue to provide my classes online to people. And I, and I was like, okay, Lord, by faith, I'm gonna do this by faith. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I, nothing's stopping me because I still feel like in me, you're telling me I need to continue to serve those people who would normally be showing up for me in a physical gym, I'm gonna create a virtual one. Thank you, Lord, for that idea. In my online, uh, for my online coaching clients, I'm gonna to continue to do that, but now I'm gonna also up the inner, I'm gonna make sure that I'm reaching out to each of them personally. I'm gonna make sure that they know that they have a, a full, uh, they still have the full online community experience, but now they're gonna get even more personal attention. They're, and I'm gonna do, daily devotionals and I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask for prayer requests and I'm going to meet, I'm going to be in agreement for what people want me to pray for them uh, and, and over their lives right now. The things that, that are causing them uh, stress and pain and anxiety, I'm going to make sure I agree with them that God is still in control and I'm going to help them. I'm going to create, I'm going to remind them every day and show them ways that they can focus on the things that they can control in their lives with you as their source and to cast their cares over for everything else. So that right there, if you just want to stop right there. But then after I read that scripture, whenever I was going through the devotional, the couple of points that I saw her go into next, she was like, okay, hey, you know what? Yeah, your spirit is powerless unless it's connected to God. Jesus tells us, you're my branches. Branches don't bear fruit unless they are connected to the vine. And I'm and the, the devotional I'm in, if y'all wanna know which devotional I'm in, it's called Leap Into Love. And um, the author is Havila Cunnington. But listen, she says, I wanna teach you a foundational truth you're going to need for the rest of your life. She says, take a moment and read through Genesis chapter one on your own. So to, for basis, for just for time here, while I'm sharing with you this devotional live, I'm just gonna to cut to the chase here, okay? I'm gonna share the, the highlights, all right? So in Genesis 1, whenever you start to go read through that, and I just did this with my kids in our Bible study together um, last week, and it's so perfect. Um, with my kids, I'm doing a different devotional, by the way. I'm doing, um, it's called um, Seamless by um, Angie Smith. Yeah. So it says in Genesis 1, it says, we see where God created every living thing, and he spoke out, and it was created, right? We know this. So whenever he first says, okay, he first speaks to the sky and places the stars, 
right? Then we see where he is, um, hold on, I'm just expand my screen to make sure I'm doing this all in order and nobody like comes out and said, you know, creation please don't come out and tell me that I quoted it wrong. But then we, so first we see he spoke to the sky, he places the stars there. Then he speaks to the water and he separates land and water for the fish, yeah? Then he created everything by speaking to the environment, okay? Everything. He said he was, when he was speaking to the sky, he was saying, okay, um, oh, and he was speaking to land. He spoke to the land to produce vegetation, Okay, so he's like, okay, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit and with seed in it, according to various kinds. And it was so the land produced vegetation, right? And you, you see in the scripture, the plants are coming up, they're bearing seed. They're doing everything that he spoke to the land to do. The land did, right? Then we see where he, it says, God said, God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So it, he spoke to the sky. He spoke and separated one light from the other, right? Okay, speaking out. Then he speaks to the water, creating a separation from land and water for the fish. And says, he, he said, swarm ocean with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over the earth. So he's speaking to the fish, he's speaking to the waters, he's speaking it right. And he created huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters. Okay, all of that in Genesis 1. So here's the point. He speak he created everything by speaking to the environment. But when God created man, when he created us, the Bible says he spoke to himself. Y'all when when I read that, I was like, "Ooh, I don't think I've ever noticed that before." That is so powerful. So come with me here. When he when he created everything else in the earth, the sky, the animal, the fish, the, the sea, the, the light, the, you know, the day and the night, he spoke to the environment, the vegetation, right? He spoke to the environment. He spoke to the land. He spoke to the water. He spoke to the sky. But when he came, he said, I want to make a human being. I'm going to make you and mankind. He spoke to himself. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. He's speaking to himself. He's speaking to himself, the Holy Spirit, and, and the word Jesus, right? So he's saying, let us, ma let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. So this is going to go towards to, to the message that I said I got that I was saying, like, don't, y'all, please, please, your kids are still watching you. They are learning from you right now how to handle a crisis and how to handle new things, this transition into something new and different and challenging. And right here, right now, we see two things happening. One, a connection to God is needed. It's vital, it's how we were even created. So how would we go on to do anything without that, right? Staying connected to him. And two, we rule. We have the ability to either rise up and overcome and take authority <laughs> over our what we can control or we can sit down. We can lounge on the couch and we can check out of life until this virus goes away. You hear me? He said, let us, okay, make mankind in our likeness and our image. What is that? What is that? What does that mean? What's God's image? What's his likeness? That's where I'm gonna go tomorrow. But right now I want you to see that what in the way Havila says it, she says, look, a plant has to stay connected to the earth in order to live. A fish has to stay in the water to live. 
A star has to stay in space to fulfill its purpose. A man has to stay connected to God to live and fulfill his purpose. We need a specific environment to live in. And that environment, y'all, is God is our source. So Lord, I just thank you right now for this now time kind of message. You've helped us to see this in a new way that maybe we've never seen it before. And you're helping us to apply it to our very now circumstance. Your Bible, your word is not void just because our circumstances have changed, just because COVID-19 is active in the earth right now. Your word is still alive and active and operative. Your power is still the same. It has not lessened. And so, Lord, we plug into you as our power source and we draw on our purpose that you have placed on the inside of us to live out of. We pull in and we connect to you so that that purpose can stay strong and alive. And as we are connected to your spirit, Lord, show us and reveal to us how we can rise up and overcome and create new life in these circumstances, in this season of life that, Lord, we know is not permanent. It will move on. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Love you guys. You have a wonderful, amazing day. I have to go get my workout in and go get ready to teach my 10 a.m. class. It, I am in Central Time. So if you want to join me live for that class, it's free to everybody. Just send me a message and I will make sure that you get the link or go to facebook.com slash groups slash living life fit. And it's all one word. And you would go into my group and all the information is in there on how to join me. If you're not on Facebook because I'm talking to Instagram right now, just DM me and I will make sure you get the virtual studio information so you can join me online, okay? All right, let's do it. Let's do this thing. Let's rise above. Let's overcome. Let's stay in our purpose and can stay connected to our source. Y'all have a good day. Bye.